Howdy folks, this is Travis of Elston Equine Solution, partnered with the Clopper Cow Company. And today what we're going to be talking about is saddle fitting to the rider. So actually the rider's fit. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the measurement of a saddle. How do you measure the seat size that you're supposed to have? Well, it's real easy. If you go into a store, always have a tape measure, no matter what kind. And you're going to measure from the tip of the gullet to the back of the cannel. And we're going to demonstrate that right now. Now, some things you have to be aware of is uh, obviously I got mule wrap here, so it's going to be forward of the point of the pommel right here, and it's going to throw it off a little bit. I'm going to go straight to the point right here and then straight to the stitching back on the cannel. So when I go straight back to the, the back of the cannel, once again, my mule tape's going in, I'm going to mark right here at the base of the stitching, okay, or the upper part right here. And I got basically a 15 inch seat. Okay. So that's typically when you go into the store, that's what you try to do. Now I know a 15 inch seat works well for me. Uh, it might not work for well for other people. For example, if the saddle's too big, what's going to happen is the rider is going to be at different positions on here. And now the bar of the saddle is going to be rotated back and forth instead of spreading the weight out. Okay. So the biggest thing to help with a proper fitting saddle is making sure the bars underneath the saddle that's touching the horse's back has even pressure. No different if a car drives on over a bridge, it will have equal pressure going across so the bridge just doesn't collapse. So that's what we're looking for here. Once again, if your saddle's too big, way too big, you know, you might have too much pressure back here and then spread out forward. So you want to make sure your center's spreading out the pressure for the rider. So that's step one. one. All right, folks, so I want to make sure there's no confusion between uh, a saddle that has Cheyenne roll of stitching up top here versus no stitching on top of here on the cantle where you're supposed to measure for your seat. So once again on this, I'm going to go to the point of the gullet. I'm going to come down to the stitching, and I'm right at about 14 and a quarter. Now, some people use the stitching. Some folks or saddle makers actually make it straight to the lead edge of saddle, where this case would be 14 inches. So I just want to make sure there's no confusion on that. So you just got to be careful. When I come over here, I'm going to do the same thing on the slick fork on the suede saddle. I'm going to come to the point of the saddle, which is right here. I'm right at 15 inches because there's no stitching there. So I just wanted to clarify that on both these saddles, different types. And I'm gonna get uh, a little publication on there that shows you exactly how to do it nice and slow where you can concentrate, but I just wanna demonstrate that. Thank you. All right, step, step two that we're going to talk about is fitting the rider to the, to the saddle. First thing I like to do is when I go into a store, and it's highly recommended, is you make sure you get your stirrups fitted properly. And the way I do that is just a rule of thumb is I first start up and I put the stirrup, this part right here, up into my 
into my armpit and go straight up. If I can go flat, I know I'm pretty much in the, the vicinity of the ballpark. And that works great for me. Now, once I get in, I'm gonna make sure I get into the saddle, I'm gonna make sure I got exactly what I need. And I'll know if I'm proper on that because I'm gonna make sure for my riding, because I wanna be centered inside the saddle, I wanna make sure my heel's down. I'm gonna make sure that my calf angle is the same angle as my thigh. And you kinda of see that. So if I'm in the rider's position and, uh, and I'm gonna have my helper come up here with a stick and she's gonna line it up from, and I'm sitting up here from heel, should be heel to spine, spine to the base of my neck. So if you can see that, I know that my stirrups are properly adjusted for my discipline, my rider's discipline. And I like it this way. Thank you. Next thing I look for in a Western saddle is once I get the stirrups lined up what I like, and I got adjusted, I know both sides are even because you don't want one stirrup higher than the other and the one lower than the other stirrup. You want them dead even. So once I got both sides adjusted, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to check for, for uh, the saddle, see what I like. Now, western riding or roping or bow racing, a lot of times the swells, this, this part right here, the swells, a lot of times we like one finger on the swell. And you can see I got one finger. The reason being is we can bring our knees up and get traction underneath the swell so we don't get ejected from the saddle and we can get our traction off of it. Slick forks, you're gonna have buck and rolls here, so you basically do the same thing. Next thing is, I'm gonna take my four fingers and I can place it between the gullet, the gullet here, and between my uh, belt buckle, I should have four fingers. That'll work straight for me. In the back, on the cantle right here, I should be pressed up at the base on it which is this location right here, I should be pressed up against it. The top, I should have a finger to a finger of half. I don't know if my camera person could see that. The top, I should have a finger to a finger and a half of rope. So that's the general rule of thumb. Now, if you're in a different discipline, obviously like a performance or a trail class, wherever you can have more room in the saddle because you're gonna be sitting right in the center. It doesn't matter, but from what I do for roping, for speed events, I have to have my measurements like this. And the next important thing I like to do is double check my saddle's correct, is I will take my elbows into my sides. I have my fingers right here like I'm riding, and I want to make sure my hands is able to be right here above the horn. And the reason that's important for me is because if the horn's too far forward, I gotta straighten out my hand, okay? Or if it's too far uh, long for a saddle and my horn's back here, I gotta adjust my elbows to be able to dally. So I wanna make sure my hand's right here without thinking. I don't have to go far for wasted movements. I can't, don't have to go here, I don't have to go here. I should be able to just wrap, or if I need to, put my hand here real quick on the horn. So on ranch style, this is what I like. I like to have the saddle fit for myself. This is how I fit. This works good for me for trail riding. It works great for me on a lot of other stuff. All right, folks, what I wanted to show you was a slick fork saddle that I got here and show you that uh, basically the dimensions and same association for me riding. I have my uh, four fingers right here, placed between the base of the horn, and right below my belt, I have four fingers. Same thing behind the cantle, I have one set of fingers, you can see one finger, from the top of my, uh, oh, probably the bottom of the tailbone to the cantle is wide open. So I got an inch, inch and a half, you know, space between there, almost two fingers to the top, very top of the cantle. And I'm in the pocket of the saddle. Now, more importantly, you remember is when I was talking about my elbows being bent, I wanted to be able to touch the center of my horn. So that way, if I do catch a critter, I could just go where I need to and dally it. I'm not wasting time. So there's no difference, and this one's got buck and rolls. Uh, this saddle right here is slick fork weight, but it's exactly the same for me. And my legs are bent for my type of ride, what I like, I have them in the same position, okay? A nice little, this one's the same angle going this way as it was this way. So I got a rider's base going straight up to 
back of my spine, the back neck, straight down to the bottom of my heels. So that's what I like in my saddles. It doesn't matter what type of saddle, I'm in the same position. Okay, folks, so what we got is we got uh, one of the horses on train. The owner is here, and she is going to get fitted for a rider's seat. And that way she knows what saddle to actually purchase, uh, what she needs for uh, seat size. So when we're looking here, we have it already set up. I already adjusted uh, the saddle stirrups. I'm going to place a stick here. Her heel's going to be straight down. And you can see I got a straight line all the way up her spine to the base of the neck. So she's doing really good there. She got the same V here she does here, which is a good leg position. Now she's got her hand. She's going to place in front of, she got her hands at a 90 degree angle. And you can see she's real close to the horn. In case she had to grab it, she needed for barrels whatever she needed to do. Now the only problem because this is a 15 inch saddle is there, uh, there's a lot of space here. So when the camera lady would come here and zero in, there is a lot, a lot of space there. So she's not all the way up to the candle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the tape measure and I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna, all right, if I take tape measure and touch your body with it. Okay, so I'm gonna go right here and if y'all look i have three and a half about three and a half inches space from the top now if i remember i guess should have one inch from here i could subtract that from what i really need so we need to subtract basically two and a half inches for her saddle so really realistically it looks like she needs about 13 and a half to 14 inch saddle and that's what we're looking at for uh this young lady here. And because what you're gonna wanna be doing is doing barrels, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so same thing here, we check here. I should have one inch to inch and a half, depending on the rider. So if she's doing barrels, she can grip the pawn or the grip the saddle right here, the gullets, and also where it jets out right here. So that's what it needs. So I recommend about 13 and a half to 14 inch saddle. Okay. So that's basically what we do to check everything that we like. And we're gonna grab one more, uh, one more lady, go ahead and do a saddle fitting for her too. And then that way you can kind of get a good idea. Now all this stuff's rule of thumb. Obviously some people like to ride their horses like a motorcycle with their stirrups kicked out. Some people like them a little bit bigger for comfort because they used to ride one saddle or one inch bigger. So they should be riding 15, ride 16, okay? So just a rule of thumb, once again, on rider seat and also what you like. But this is a good rule of thumb right here. So I hope this helps you out. I'm going to grab our next person. Take care. Now you have the solution. Adios. Mm -hmm.